Hey everyone, it's Amy Astro here and welcome back to my channel. This week, as you can see by the surroundings here, maybe it's a little deceiving with being a brick wall, I am hiding just so I can get a video out for you. This week I wanted to tell you guys all about that new camera that I have, the Altair Astro 269C Color Cool Camera. I've been using it for a while now and I thought it was time for me to give you guys my thoughts and opinions on it. So let's get started. So first off, when you receive your camera, it comes in this really nice hard shell carrying case. They really want to protect their investment on this camera, so you don't have to worry about how it arrives in shipping. And the box is very easy to open. It's got that pluck foam on the inside, and it comes complete with your camera, a USB 3 cable, and it has the 12 volt power supply on the inside here and an extra desiccant tube for moisture but you should really not have any reason to use it this thing is completely sealed so a little bit about this camera because everybody wants a few specs and i'm not going to overly charge you guys with a bunch of specs but this is the altair astro 269 color cool it's the tec which is the thermal electric cooled meaning that it needs a 12 volt power supply to run the cooling function of it. But it also has two USB 2 ports, which are great if you had filter wheels for any reason, or if you wanted to plug in your um, little flash drive and store all your data files back here, which a lot of folks really do. And then it's got the USB 3 port, which is where you connect it back to your computer system, okay? This has 3.3 micron pixel size which is a very generous pixel size um, the inside has a sensor it's a sony sensor it has a four-thirds um, it's known as a four-thirds sensor as you can see right here it's it's pretty significant in size and it is uh, 5280 by 3956 so very good size, very good size. All right, this has a four gigabyte memory RAM stored on the inside. So the benefit of that is that your images will travel quicker from the camera to the computer, which not having all that extra lag helps you with one other thing that you don't really think about. And that would be your amp glow or people call it by so many different ways, but let me just describe it. That's that starburst bright effect that you get on the corner of an image or on the top of an image, and it's like a starburst and it comes across. And typically, the longer your exposure, the more pronounced this gets, to the point where it turns out really white and it's like blown out, it's data lost, and you have to crop that section out of an image. Now, in the past, I've used a number of the color cameras by several different manufacturers and they all had this problem. And really that kind of turned me off of one-shot color cameras and I decided to stray off and do mono, which is, you know, really kind of my preference. But then I got this camera and I thought, you know, there are nights, a lot of them lately, where you just don't have enough time to collect all the data you need. Um, so it'd be a, a bit faster if I could just do one-shot colors sometimes. And that's when I picked up this camera. Now let me tell you, this camera is the first one-shot color camera that has impressed me. And why did it impress me? It has very little noise in the images. You know, they all have noise. But this one is noticeably less than the other one-shot color cameras I've used. And you know what was absent from all my images? The glow the starburst on the side of the images. Um, that was really quite shocking. I started out with a one minute image and didn't notice anything, didn't have many hot pixels, um, 
that was kind of impressive in itself. And then I said, well, let's just push it. Where does a five minute image take me? Now keep in mind, I am in a Bortle six, seven area. I have stadium lights behind me. I've got Walmart, I've got grocery stores. I'm in the middle of the city, basically, you know, well, the suburbs are where was where I'm at. So the cameras don't usually work out all that well. And I've never been able to take over a four minute image without it being just blown out from the sky pollution or the, the amp glow that was all coming on on the edges. Well, I pushed this to five minutes. Impressive. All right, no starburst. That's a huge improvement. And then, you know, just because I could, I did a 10 minute image. In fact, I did 10 minute images all night long. Zero, zero amp glow. I didn't have to calibrate any of that nastiness out. It was earth shaking. It was impressive. Yeah, um, this is a, I don't regret. This is a camera that I will actually enjoy using. Now all my other one shot color cameras, I'll be honest, I've gotten rid of them. I've sold them. And this purple beast, well, I think I'm going to keep this guy. So now that I've told you that I liked it, let me show you a few images on the computer and let you decide what your opinion is. All right, so we're over here on the computer and I can tell you all these great things about this camera, but really the proof is going to be in the image. So let me show you a five minute exposure that came straight out of the camera. Now this is of, well, I say it's the monkey head, but it's not. It is the Tadpole Nebula. And well, here's the question. Do you see anything? It is so faint. It is just amazing I even captured anything. And this gave me some doubts at first when I saw this image pop up on my screen. I was like, well, I am just going to have to trust my plate solving technique and hope this is on my target like I had planned. And I just went on with my imaging. But I was really surprised at just how faint all of this detail was. You come over here and there's one tadpole and there's another, but you can barely see it. And this is a five minute exposure. Now I'm gonna make this a little bigger and we're gonna zoom in some. You see, I do have some hot pixels, but they came out rather easily with the cosmetic correction. Um, I have nice sharp stars, and really this is a good image for five minutes. And I want you to look at this image from corner to corner here. There's no glow. There's, there's none whatsoever. But let's take this one step further and let's just do a uh, histogram transformation stretch on it real quick just to prove to you what it is let's see that's this image right here and you can see it's not stretched yet i'm going to do a live view here real time and i'm going to stretch it just a little bit more and i want you to look for the glow on the edges and the more i stretch this you would be normally on a normal camera normal every other camera I have ever used in my life, you would see that glow on the edges. And the longer the exposure, the bigger the glow, it would come towards the center of the image. And a lot of times you would only have the very center that's usable. But this image is usable from corner to corner. And that really impressed me because like I said, I've never done that before. So this is a five minute exposure, but let's see what a 10 minute exposure looks like. There it is hiding. And it's just as faint, you know, I can start seeing some nebulosity here. I know that my tadpoles are right here now, but it doesn't show a whole lot. So I went ahead and I continued taking images. And I've got a stack of about 30 images here. And this is my five minute exposure. That's 30 images all stacked together. Now it's incredible that this came out of this image right here. Let's uh, get them back here to the same size. 
I mean, would you have guessed that? I, I was dumbfounded when that happened. So there is data there. It's just really faint and I just didn't see it. And you trust your place solving. But that's a five minute image. So let's take a look at our six minute image. All right, there are, th well, not six minutes, 10 minute image, 600 seconds. And this is also 30 images. And I've got just a little bit more um, contrast in this image. I've got some more detail up in here that I thought was rather intriguing. And let's see, what does it look like over here in five minutes? There it is, you can see it right there. But I think you can see it just a little bit better there with the 10 minutes. But as you look, can see, noise-wise, I think the 10 minute definitely has more noise. And um, it's really a noise quality. It's larger noise pieces, smaller noise pieces. But by the time I was done processing this image, you couldn't see any of it. So it was really quite nice. But what I decided to do, rather than process this image all the way out and this image all the way out, I decided to put all of the images together and make a giant stack of 60. And this is what I came out with with all of them. So I've definitely got some more color going on and some more um, light and dark differences. But overall, I was really impressed. And I'm going to come over here. And this is what my final image looked like after I got done processing. All right, guys. So what did you guys think about that? Is that a camera that maybe you'll be interested in the future or nah, not really? Really, every camera has up to the person that owns it. It's personal preference, personal style. Um, this one just happened to strike my fancy. Um, my other ones did not impress me and they are gone. They are no longer in the drawers or anything. I just left them. So guys, if you like this kind of video, don't forget to subscribe below, hit the alert bell so you know when I upload new astro related material. If you guys have questions, comments, leave them below or follow me over there on Facebook or on my website and send me a private message. I do my very best to get to each and every one of them. And those of you that I have talked to in the past, you all know I'm usually pretty quick at responding to your questions. All right, so I'm Amy Astro. I appreciate you spending your afternoon time with me watching this video, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. And until then, I love all of y'all. Goodbye.